Superwoman! My back is cramping. Hi, my name is Scout Forsyth. I'm a professional ballet dancer with American Ballet Theater, and this week I am testing out ballet-inspired workouts. Get in there. But what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, am I right? So I know there's a lot of workouts out there that claim to be ballet inspired, but I was really curious to see how ballet inspired they were versus just some ballet sprinkled on Pilates or something like that. I dove headfirst into five different workouts. I started with bar and then a recovery focused workout called the Hamrick Method. I did a ballet workout called Boxerina Fit, which is inspired by boxing. And then I tried Fit by Kel, which is a circuit and sculpt training for ballet dancers. And then I finished it off with the Train Like a Ballerina Method, which is all about keeping ballet ballet dancers fit during whatever part of your season you're in. The thing about ballerinas is that we are the perfect mixture of strength and flexibility. And so I think that is something that's very unique. Seeing that and watching that and knowing that ballet dancers are so in tune with what's going on in every part of their being, I think there's kind of an attraction to that. So I took a bar class with a good friend of mine. Her name is Alyssa and she's a certified bar instructor. It's inspired by Pilates, ballet, yoga, every kind of training modality out there mixed into one. And like it just swooped up ballet and they kind of mixed it together. Most of the bar workout was in a standing position, but the leg was bent as opposed to ballet where your leg is almost always stretched and straightened. And I noticed that by having my leg bent and working kind of the movement of the upper body, there was the stability muscles around the knees that were super fatigued and super sore the next day. Those muscles are like kind of like the coils or the springs around your legs. Just gives you better jumps and it helps you land. So to me, that's like a, hey, I don't use this muscle enough. So I think the reason that this class in particular was hard for me, even though it was kind of the most similar to an actual ballet class, was the repetition of doing something over and over and over again. You know, I'm very used to, you do something a couple times and then you move because ballet isn't just like standing there and like lifting your arm up, lifting your arm up, you know, it, we're, we're dancing. So there's a fluidity of movement in working our bar and in class. Whereas this is a workout, like you want to get your blood pumping, you want to do something, you want to fatigue your muscles. So that was really hard to do a bunch of tondus and a bunch of plies and demi secon like uh. <laughs> grab a sip of water if you need it i'm already sweating then we got down to the ground and that was really awesome because there was a lot of really pretty <laughs> movements that were engaging the core and I, I was so sore the next day in my abs and my side like laughing hurt all right we're gonna start Parallel on the side, so feet all the way together, no space in between the legs. Bar, we did a lot of movements and squats and stuff in parallel, and parallel is not a classical ballet position. It's incorporated in a lot of dancing and like more like lyrical-esque ballets and contemporary stuff, but you will not find a parallel dancer in a ballet, proper ballet. The soreness though in that one hour bar class compared to like an hour, or sorry, seven hours of rehearsing, it's different. When I come in the next day after a long rehearsal day, it's this overall, like almost everything in my body is going to snap, crack and pop and needs to be stretched. Whereas after the bar workout, it was like the areas that we targeted were sore, you know, like, so like my upper body and shoulders weren't very sore, but my abs and my butt and my thighs and my hamstrings and my core, like those were sore. <laughs> I think that I'm going to start adding bar in more of an off season sort of thing because it is a good workout and it is ballet inspired. I'm not sure that doing in the middle of performance season, I'm going to do a bar class because it's, it's freaking hard. Like you go hard in it. The next ballet inspired workout I did was created by a professional ballet dancer. I used to dance with her sister in American Ballet Theater. She's now retired. Rachel Hamrick is the one that created the Hamrick Method. And she's also the inventor of the Flexi Stretcher. And if you've watched any of my videos, you know that I love my Flexi Stretcher so much. So I developed um, the Hamrick Method for anyone looking to really strengthen and enhance their dancing and to avoid injury. I've had a little bit of ankle instability, which 
which has led to an injury, unfortunately. I think she kind of tailored the whole class to what my needs were, and we started immediately just down on the ground sitting, uh, let's do some ankle stabilizing exercises. The first thing we did was just on the ball, just did releves, and my calves were almost cramping at certain points because being on a surface that's so unstable, you're working out and stabilizing at the same time. So there's this like constant readjustment, repositioning, re-engaging happening. So it's not just like, oh, I do releves on a ball. It's like every single minute, tiny little itsy bitsy muscle in my foot was just on fire and working. So it was way harder than it looks. Rachel invented another band. I was down on the ground and we hooked one end of the strap uh, to one foot and the other end to the other. My legs were having resistance on them in that ballet movement while engaging the core. So I'm not technically in a ballet classical position while doing this ab workout where my legs are going, you know, back and forth. But instead of like a normal class where you go parallel back and forth, you know, Rachel was like, let's point your legs, let's turn them out, let's get them moving. I know for me, when I go into adagio next or like having any kind of grand bat ma where I'm kicking my leg up and bringing it down, I'm gonna remember that motion of having that resistance and then not having the resistance and being able to like go for it because you've got that strength of, you gain the strength of having it being kind of pulled down and away from you. Using the back of my legs while, while I'm pushing down on the ball, you're already in this like super unstable position and then she wants you to bend your legs and that's like the one motion where it's like very similar to a fondue, which is you extend and bend and s extend and bend, but do it on a surface that, that's making you feel like you're like this. I went to fondues the next day, you guys, it was like a piece of cake. Towards the end of class, I'm like up on my toes, the ball is right behind my ankle, so you're kind of resting on it. So I'm not in a full releve, I'm in like a quarter releve, which is the most instable place for me and for anybody that does ballet because we don't work that. We work, you know, flat on the surface or up in releve. So this middle ground is kind of the sh more shaky aspect. Yeah, nice. That's hard. And we'd have to go down into a squat. I was kind of in a parallel position, but then I'd have to stand up, keeping that releve and kick my leg up to the side and hold. That was a really cool one, and I really, really liked ending with that exercise. The next on the list was Boxerina Fit, and that marries boxing and ballet-inspired workout together for a very like low impact, but a good hard workout. Boxerina Fit was pretty cool. She has like the cutest outfit. Some of the first things we did was just like simple movements of like, you were just kind of like doing like arm movements of like, just like really like kind of getting in the body and like, like moving your hips side to side. I love it, she's got all her jewelry on and like leg warmers. I feel like I should go grab some of my leg warmers. She just looks so cute with them on and I need to do it. I love a good leg warmer over your tight. The things that kind of just reminded me the most of ballet is like the way that she liked to move her arms. There was one part where she had us doing full on swan arms and we were doing like bores, but we weren't doing bores in the sense of like ballet where they're you just keep your body up and like move the ankles. You were kind of just taking little tiny steps which were engaging like the butt, the calves, the inner thighs, which was very, very, very much like a ballet move. Like that's what you do in swan leg. You bore it and you bring your arms up and down. So I'm with the torture is a swan leg. There wasn't too much boxing in this one, but I think there were just some, like, some motions where we were doing stuff and she was like, okay, and punch, and punch. I can't do it. I think we're getting hot. They really work. Those leg warmers. <laughs> she definitely is aware of where like the body weight is. And I think that's kind of where like the boxing kind of came in because I think just from what I know and kind of my not super deep knowledge of boxing is that they're constantly on your toes, moving to the next place, avoiding what's happening in front of you. So I think that was like the really cool aspect of using your body weight as your workout gear. See, the difference between ballet and this is I don't do this on stage for 10 minutes straight. Oh, my arms are killing me. So I'd say this workout was definitely more dance inspired than it was just like a ballet inspired workout. I don't know if I would do something like that before a show or like in the middle of a heavy rehearsal period just because it's so um, hard. <laughs> I have Sundays and Mondays off when we're just rehearsing and on Mondays I like to do at least one like decent uh, Pilates inspired or something like workout where I'm just like, oh, that was 
was hard and I'm getting a sweat in. That could be my new Monday. I'm really worried about this one. She seems like a badass. Oh. The next one I did was a sculpting class from Fit by Kel. It was just on YouTube. Like it was that simple. You know, what I loved about the overall workout part of it is that it was very, very, very ballet inspired. Her classes definitely had some bar in them. Like we started off in that second position where we were just doing some plies and then move the arms and move the arms. Ooh, it's a butt burner. It wasn't so much about how many exercises she could fit into that half hour workout or that hour workout. It was the quality of them. So when I was doing some kind of movement, I could kind of almost zone out in a sense. You got a little dog over there. Coach Cal, you're killing me. There was a lot of stuff when we were using the bar that was very, very ballet-esque. Facing the bar and I'm lifting my leg. So the ponche, and this is a ballet move, you're standing at the bar or you're dancing with a partner and he's behind you and he's holding you and your one leg is standing down straight. So that's at six o'clock and your back leg is at around nine o'clock and it goes 10, 11, 12. And you're in like a straight up and down line of your legs and your body's trying to stay as lifted and like as pretty and up and like oh this is so easy and effortless and you're like ah <laughs> the things that weren't ballet was like a lot of the floor work <laughs> it's honestly a movement i've never done before that's pretty funny it's like learning new choreography we're just like what planking is not something you do in ballet but it's super helpful for core strength and overall body strength and it's a really really good quick warm-up especially if you're like ah i'm running late what's the one thing i could do i swear all the dancers are down their planks because it kind of fires that whole body and that whole internal core you're having to like hug and hold my arm. Fit by Kel, 100% behind her, would absolutely do it again. So the last ballet inspired workout I did was called the TLB method. The TLB method was kind of similar to the hammock method in the sense of, especially in the ballet section, that it was made for dancers. You have like kind of made for people that do already understand the basis of ballet, like Ballet 101. And it was really easy. It's on an app. I went to here, ballet. So these were ballet targeted. And then I went to posture and I tried to do advanced and that was too hard. So then I went to intermediate. The TLB method definitely was ballet inspired, but again, a lot of like the floor workouts aren't ballet. A lot of movements that we were doing aren't ballet. At 17 with ABT, our teacher director was Kate Leiden. And Kate Leiden had the most beautiful port de bras and the most like smiliest face when she did it. And whenever we would do this kind of motion with our hands, she'd always say, scoop the ice cream, scoop the ice cream, scoop the ice cream. And it always made me hungry for ice cream in the middle of dance class. All right. The verbiage was definitely ballet words instead of their translation from French. I knew what they were talking about. I understood like when we were laying down and she said arms up in fifth. And so like, you know, you like lift your body up and you put your arms in fifth and then you go back behind. Now this isn't a ballet move necessarily, but by understanding that she says arms up in fifth and then arms behind your back in a low fifth. Like I understand what that movement was. And then ending with like just something as simple as like placing my hand on the chair and I had, I didn't have a weight. So I used a water bottle and just like lifting it up because it's engaging those back muscles that are holding you. And so say you get like all those fired up and then you stand up and you're like, oh, oh, okay, cool. Cause you're pinching your upper spine together where you're like, oh, okay, that's the movement. So it just kind of took that ballet picture and kind of put it in different extremes that you wouldn't necessarily do in a ballet class and engage muscles that you're like, hey, I haven't felt those in a while. Posture is something that is so, it, it just is ballet. Like there is no way to get around doing ballet and not having good posture. But I rarely just take a posture class. Like I rarely think of like, oh, what are the exercises that I can do for myself right now to strengthen my upper spine? So it was really cool to have that kind of like focus and that class that was just for posture because that's not something I do every day. I have this like thought process when I was younger that if I worked out too much, I would get bulky and I wouldn't have that pretty ballerina line. But I've now come to realize that that is so not true at all. You know, working out doesn't mean bulk. Working out is healthy and so good for you. 
Overall, I really enjoyed working the TLB method, the train like a ballerina method. Um, it was really cool to just like specifically work on one area of my body. Totally do the TLB method again. I think there's so many workouts on there that I've yet to even scratch the surface of. And it's so nice that it's on an app. So adding these to my routine this week has definitely made me sore. <laughs> I love being sore and going into ballet class the next day because you feel what muscles that you're using in a ballet class. So like we were doing something and I was like, oh, this is where I engage this part of my body. So it kind of like highlights those areas of you that need a little extra attention while you're dancing. If I had to say which ones I would recommend to ballet dancers, the top top, it would absolutely be the hammock method. For non-dancers, uh, bar method, Coach Kel, she's on YouTube. Anybody can just go do 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 fit by Kel you're on there. Boxerina Fit, she's also another one that's really easily accessible to anybody who wants to feel like a beautiful ballerina, but quick and strong like a boxer. You're not gonna become a ballerina overnight. There is, that's the truth. I'm sorry to break it to you. It's just not gonna happen, but you can get your body moving and you can engage and ignite certain muscle groups that ballet dancers use that maybe you don't use on an everyday basis. So that's it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you guys have any suggestions for any more ballet inspired workouts I didn't mention or haven't even heard of, like please drop them in the comments. I'd love, love, love to see what you've got. And I just say, keep dancing, keep moving, get the blood pump in and we'll see what happens next time. Mickey apparently really wants to be in this video, but he has to go outside. Goodbye. I can't be in the workout video because I'm not a ballerina.